What is good, everyone? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Stay Attached podcast. Today, I'm joined by Lamar Akasi, a Betty, a five-time Call of Duty champion, and one of the best at molding talent. You've seen it with Kenny, Pred, Sib, Mac, Farrow, so many other players that he's helped build up and just become superstars in the scene. Lamar, welcome to the show. What's good, bro? Pleasure to be here. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let's get right into the uh, questions, the juicy questions. Uh, did you coach Optic at uh, this Cod guy's Champs? This milking me for intel, bro. This guy is trying to milk me. Because there was a rumor, like, there was a picture even a Discord <laughs> call. Like, what happened with that whole Optic situation? Um, You were just hanging out, or? Yeah, we were just vibing. Like, we were just chilling, you know, not really much going on. Just hanging out and vibing, you know what I mean? There was no Call of Duty communication taking place at that time period. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was just you're good yeah. friends with Pred and Kenny, so yeah, exactly. You want to check up on them right before the biggest know, tournament of the year? There's legal obligations that need to be in place, so you know, of course, I could not, you know, do any Call of Duty communication mm. at that time. You know? Okay, well, I just wanted yeah. to see because I heard rumors and stuff. I just wanted to actually get the answer, and it seems like we kind of got it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as this video's out now, the people know <laughs> that you retired from playing yeah. um was there a moment that like a, a real big moment that you knew like all right this is like the last hurrah or like this is the moment like when did you know that it's done playing of course um i mean to be honest i kind of knew uh maybe once we were like three quarters of the way into the season that i was just probably gonna be my last season um you know there was many factors going into that um getting older um family situations, uh, just needing to kind of, I guess, settle down, get closer back to home. Uh, I knew that I didn't really want to do another year out there roaming on whatever team I was on and mm -hmm. living away from home and, you know, just kind of MIA. I mean, at this point, I'm 28 years old. Um, it's kind of time to set down some more permanent roots, you know, in my hometown and just get more situated and kind of living a more a real, real life <laughs> yeah real, more real and stable life you know what i mean yeah when you're, when you're competing you're just getting tossed around switching teams switching cities you never know what's going on next and you never really have opportunity to like settle down you know yeah. so it's kind of around that time period is kind of when i knew i mean last year was a fucking disaster so uh, I was absolutely dopeless. And I would like to tell you guys about my favorite products from First Form. They've been helped keeping me fueled for long gaming sessions or a quick snack after the gym. Here are the level one bars. They have so many different flavors from s'mores, pumpkin spice crunch. My personal favorite is the chocolate chip cookie dough. Insane. 15 bars come in the pack. The level one bar is a must. And the first form of Formula One and protein powder drink mix has 32 servings per container. And each serving is about 20 grams of protein. They have so many different flavors to choose from, from cherry lime, all the way to orange dreamsicle. Or you can have your strawberry vanilla milkshake, chocolate milkshake, so many different flavors. You will definitely find one for you. It's a must after every single workout to make sure you're getting the right amount of protein in. First form has some of the most comfortable clothes you can everywhere they're breathable they feel great when you're working out and they have so many different colors to choose from yeah, let me click on this one for you guys so you can see it yeah, this the combat khaki nice color they have all different types as well there's so many different things to choose from and they're super comfortable cannot recommend these shirts anymore yeah um and speaking of last year like what would you think the biggest reason for rockers struggles as a team what was the cause to that you think you guys started off pretty well. You got you got fourth at the first major. I don't think anyone yeah. really expected that. Yeah. But then it, of course, went down from hill or went yeah. down from there, downhill from there. I mean, the season really turned around after we choked versus uh, Toronto and Optic mm -hmm. at the start of major two qualifiers. Uh, that's really when the team started going down. And then if you look at the matches, uh, we choked those two. And then the next like three matches after that, we also choked those. So we literally could have had like a 5-0 and start, and that probably would have changed the trajectory of the whole season. For sure. But we ended up choking five matches straight in like <laughs> yeah, some crazy like, losses. Yeah, like, when that like happens. Every match was a dagger, like one <laughs> dagger, two daggers, three daggers. Like how many more daggers can you take? Yeah, you know there's going to be a straw that breaks the camel's back at some exactly. point. Exactly. So. so after we started choking all those matches, that's kind of when the team uh, went downhill and, you know, the performance started dwindling and just everything started falling apart. And then uh, that – time period after major two we you know roster change situations were going down um 
I don't really want to get into all the nitty gritty details of all that, but just yeah. know there was there was some fugazery going on. Well, you could um, say you could say a couple of things, like some things that could have potentially happened that didn't. Like you don't have to get too crazy, but what you uh, yeah, what, what you were trying to go for, <laughs> what you were trying to go for, your first like options if you could get them. Um, I mean, initially our first thoughts were trying to get Beans and Hixie, but you know we realized soon enough that that wasn't really an option based off other factors um, yeah and so we couldn't make that happen so then we had to move on to our next option uh which was going to be illy and then um things fell through with that too and then we were at that point we you know made our next choice uh because stage was starting up soon so we made our next yeah. choice and went with that and then you know obviously we saw how everything played out from there yeah and uh, so, of course, not the best season, not the most fun season. Um, you end up calling it, but then you decide to get into coaching. We saw recently with like you joined Cloud9 alongside myself and a couple others. But sure. um, how did that whole thing go from retiring to coaching? Because, of course, it's a big leap. Everyone talks about or even but everyone knows, like when you make such a drastic change, like you've been doing something for a decade plus now and to just not be doing that anymore. Of course, you're still coaching, which is not playing but you're still in the scene and know a bunch of people um how did that go and how'd you end up on c9 were there any other options or how did that coaching roster mania i guess you can call it go down for you i mean it was pretty honestly intriguing uh because <laughs> going into it there was um a lot of stuff going on um there was one team that i really wanted to join that i had my eyes set on but um some outside factors came into play so that team fell through um, and then the next main target was LAT and it was pretty much like a lock for LAT from my perspective. Um, that's where I wanted to coach cause they were going to be LA based. It was perfect. Cause I want to stay in LA and like be close to home. So that was the opportunity I was going to take. And, uh, you know, then the roster mania got a little weird at yeah. that point. and that's when they started forming their team and all these other factors came into play. And that's when, you know, in roster mania it gets mixy sometimes <laughs> so some curveballs got thrown in yeah. there and then uh it went from me being like a lock on lat to um to me not being on lat them getting a different coach to go with shane and them moving to texas so yeah. i wouldn't have been able to even really go with them anyways uh because they're going to be going to texas so that wasn't going to work out. And then from there, that's when I realized, all right, we need to make a move. Like I need to make a move, find out what's going on next. Cause if I want to stay in the scene, I needed to be on a team that was going to be either let me be remote or let me, you know, work in LA at the time. So yeah. that's when uh, cloud nine came into the picture and I started talking to Dante and you and uh, cause I knew you guys wanted to play together. And um, so then from there, just got together talk to you guys talk to cloud nine cloud nine made their decision on you know which way they wanted to move with the roster and that's when we started recruiting people and came up with the roster that we had i mean roster mania is crazy like personally i've been through hundreds <laughs> of them it feels like at this point and yeah I feel like I've, I've been like shadow gming like all of them for so many years that it was kind of easy to see how the pieces were going to fall and like what needed to happen and who was going to go where so it kind of just uh it kind of played the way we thought it would you know what i mean yeah and i mean it's kind of interesting for you as well because you've always been known as like one of the players that would help mold players coach help people learn like really develop a system in call of duty because there is a way to play call of duty especially in respawn yeah. that like you need to follow where first guy off spawn if they have full control someone needs to take a really long route the first guy off spawn and everyone else fills in after that last guy in line picks up pinch kind of simple stuff like that but um when you were playing and practicing did you always feel like you were a player and a coach like what was your 100%. main focus when you were on a team coming from 100%. you because we, we hear a bunch of other stuff but what coming from you what do you feel like you were doing and bringing to a team i mean it feels like i've been a player coach my whole career to be honest with you um for me personally maybe this wasn't the most effective decision but we got decent re i guess i got decent results through doing it but it was more so like when i was practicing i was more so focused on the mini map and not necessarily like what I was doing because you need like you need to be able to formulate a plan and it's a lot easier to register these things in the moment and make sure you're keeping tabs on mm -hmm. everything and pay attention to the minimap, make sure everyone's doing everything right. Um and going and like 
learning from the mistakes and kind of adapting to the situations and all that. Um, I think as I got, I guess, a little older, I would say, it would probably would have been better for me to focus on myself more than just worrying about that. Um, because I guess the staff and everything else got more robust. Mm -hmm. So you had an opportunity. Yeah. To you had like help pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You have helps. You have opportunity to step back as a player and focus on yourself instead of having to worry about the team and formulating your system. Like that's not necessarily, it's like a part of your job, but it's not necessarily the main part of your job at that time anymore because you have staff and support and everything else like that, you know? But for me, it's just so ingrained. I've done it my whole career. That is hard to just like not focus on that. Um, but I think the highlight would always be developing a system, catching the mistakes, the little things, the little tweaks, um, and overall game plan to, you know, adapt and change and figure out what the right thing is to do and figure out how to play the game. Um, that's definitely my strong suit. I mean, I think if you look at the track record, pretty much at the beginning of, I would say 90% of the games, my team always has a good performance at the first event. So I think that learning those systems is like my top quality. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you've had a couple really good seasons with the teams. If you can go back and play with one team for a season, who would you pick? Damn, that's a good question. I heard a big surge. Seattle, Seattle surge? surge Vanguard. Seattle Surge Vanguard for sure. Was that was was that Sib and Prez rookie year? Yeah, Sib and Pred rookie year with Mac. Uh, that's that season. And of course, the TK season <laughs> yeah, are probably yeah. like my two favorite seasons of all time. Um, but if I had to pick one, I'd go back and do the the Seattle Surge Vanguard team. That that year to me is just like special, unique. Um, there was just so much about it that made it special, and so many experiences and moments that honestly were insane. Um, yeah. So to me, that's like I look back on that year with like extremely fond memories. And then that was an interesting year because um, I mean, you were on Rocker before that. Just came off getting benched. You got benched. Like, how did they go into the next season? Like, how did you build the team? How did you pick the players, the staff? Like, how did that all go down? Because, of course, Siv and Pred are, you know, they were in the COD Trans Grand Finals this past year. Yeah. Pred's on Optic. And uh, Dante's one of the best, if not the best AR. He's always competing with, like, the other best ARs in the game. So, yeah. like, how, but this, you picked them up when they were, like, unproven. How did yeah. that decision get made? So at that time, um, Sam Phoenix and Brandon Novus Vita, uh, they were hitting me up about playing on Seattle going into around the champs time of Cold War. Um, so I was in there talking with them about what kind of roster we could build and, you know, what we could do. And um, certain names came up. Uh, like we had Pred on the table. We talked about him. We had Dante, like we had Dante on the table. We talked about him. We talked about every player kind of, and that's the roster that we had formulated. And, you know, the... I t they gave me they gave me the spiel on AG. That I asked for some VOD. They sent me some VOD. I watched him play. And I was like, yo, this guy's pretty good. <laughs> I was like, this guy's pretty good. And then I like was listening to his comms. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's pretty good comms. He has intensity, he has energy. And then I had a, I was like, let me talk to him. So I had gotten like a Discord call with him, had a conversation with him. And then I was like, yo, this guy's like the real deal. Like there's a, there's no reason to not take a chance on him. Like, yeah, he, everything looks like, good. Yeah, yeah, it seems like he has a dog in him. He has good personality, good intensity, like good gameplay. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the point of picking up some dude that might just be okay or like a, I guess, uh, a person that's a known quantity? Like, might as well take a chance on him and yeah. end up being insane. Um, and which is what ended up happening. And then I was when I was talking to him too, he told me he was Muslim. I was like, yo, that's my dog right here. <laughs> Sign him up. <laughs> yeah. Sign him up. Um, and then after that, you know, looking at Dante, we just knew that I mean, Dante should have been in the league before that. Like, yeah, this kid is an insane talent. You should watch his screen and you're like, all right, this doesn't look normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah, watch this guy is one of yeah. the straightest shots in the game. So, yeah, exactly. Like, you watch the screen and you know it just looks different compared to everyone else. Yeah. So at that point, we're like, yo, we got to get him like 100%. Of course. So Oh no! Sorry to cut you off. Also, like the big thing about Pred, like I heard everyone knew Sib was gonna be gross because I mean yeah, you just watched him and you're like okay, this guy's gross. Yeah. But with Pred, what we forgot to mention and you forgot to bring up is like he's Australian too. And yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the highest placing of Australian team is like fourth or sixth at COD champ or COD champs and Ghost. But yeah. like to take a risk on an Australian player, that's even like a higher risk to take rather than just oh, yeah, an sure. na challenger who like, has talent so yeah because it could have been said that he was just farming plumbers and the mm -hmm. lads and dads but in reality that boy was a dog so he came in there yeah and, you know the mentality we had going into is we knew we were a rebuild team we knew we were a rebuild situations so where like, we have to take gambles we have to take risks yeah and in our mind it was kind of like 
okay, we're taking a risk. We're taking, I guess, not that big a risk on Sib because he should be good. We're taking a risk on Pred, and then we have Max. So, like, in our mind, it's like, yo, if one of them hits and ends up being an S-tier player, like, wow, perfect. Mm-hmm. If, if both of them hit, holy shit, like, <laughs> we're, we're more than golden, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, so that was like kind of the mentality going into it is to take those gambles. And then we knew Mac was just going to be good because he had like a really good two seasons in a row. Mm-hmm. And then he, uh, we knew he'd be fought good on our team. Good to like, I teamed with him in MW19. I knew what he brought to the table. Um, so we picked him up and then honestly going into it, which is funny, is honestly the story of our team going into, it, we started playing the S and D tourneys at the beginning of Vanguard. And I was like scratching my head, like, yeah, we're kind of ass. <laughs> <laughs> we're not that good at this, you know what I mean? And then I was, like, losing full the first three days, but then we started scrimming. And, like, we started scrimming, and literally, like, day one or day two of scrimming, I was like, yo. We're responding. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, we're nasty. You know what I mean? Like, it, clicked, yeah. it clicked for us so fast. I was like, yo, we're nasty. And then, like, we started playing and, like, going into it, like, everything just felt natural we were frying like we were frying in scrims like so bad and then like every day one of them would go on like a 10 kill spree whenever we'd scrim phase or like one of these other teams mm-hmm. like a top team yeah what pred or pred or dante or mac or someone would be going on like some random 10 kill spree on the map and i'm like i'm looking around i'm like holy shit we could do it yeah we're actually <laughs> like, gonna be I, was like, good. I was like yo we could really do the damn thing yeah like, we're, we're fighting like what the hell and then that's kind of just when it clicked and it got even more motivated more intense and like doubled down on everything because we knew like i knew at least for me like i was like oh we have a chance like I'm yeah. not wasting my time playing like we actually have a chance to like be something special so i was just doubling down harder grinding more motivated more dope like more passion and everything and you know that's how that season went it was honestly a great 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 experience yeah, no, that was a good season because it was like you said a rebuild year, and you end up winning a tournament. Which in a rebuild yeah. year, that's obviously not very uh, yeah. doesn't really happen in a rebuild I year. Mean, I think. think I think we're the only team that's ever been a successful rebuild. There's yeah. been no other team that's been a rebuild and actually been competitive. Yeah, been like that competitive because you guys obviously I think you got third at champs that year as well. Third at champs, yeah. and you guys would have won another event if Mac didn't throw up on the stage. I'm about to John. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, you can get to that later when we start scrimming. <laughs> but um. Now that it's all said and done, you're coaching, you retired from playing. Is there anything that you regret in your career, whether it be a certain tournament you wish you could have done something a little uh, better or like a certain roster change you made, whatever it could be? Is there anything that you kind of look back on like, damn, I wish I did this slightly different? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> What's the a lot. biggest one, though? It's like There's the one lot. that sticks out the most. So there always has to be one that like itches at you and the one that always is in the back of your mind. Damn, let me think about it for a second. The number one <laughs> roster change or number one moment? Whatever number, whatever I mean, the biggest both. thing in your head that you're like, damn, like, I wish this went differently. I mean, for me, it's uh, the beginning of Black Ops 4. If the beginning of Black Ops 4 went differently, or I guess you could all say Champs World War 2, but we won't even get into that. But <laughs> the beginning of Black Ops 4 went differently, my legacy would be completely different. Like, no one, no one remembers second or any of that, but... Uh, reality it's beginning of black ops 4 our team was god like we choked the first event to let optic win we were up three hundred thousand. that was bad that was bad on, and then they won the tournament so imagine i would have came off my world war ii year and then won the first event of the next game yeah you would looked insane best exactly. player best they are in world war ii you win the first turn of black ops 4 everyone's looking at you like you're that guy exactly and then the next event after that we got to the finals and got ramparted in the finals <laughs> So, like, I had a chance to have, like, a insane run at that point. Like, if I would have won those events, or at least won one of those two events, yeah. I would have looked like the truth. You know yeah. what I mean? So, that could have changed the whole trajectory of my legacy at that point. And, of course, like, as a player being in the moment, I'm like, yeah, damn, we still did good. We got second and third. And, like, the third we got was bullshit. We fucking choked a 200-point lead, you know? <laughs> um, but, like... No one cares. Yeah, no, no one, one remembers that. that. Yeah, no one, no, one, no one remembers that you got second or third. No one remembers how you got second that we got cheated basically yeah. at the finals. No one remembers that you choked a 200 point lead for the tournament. Like, no one remembers anything. Either of that. you won or you lost. Exactly. That's it. So, like, if I would have came off the World War II year and then won one of those two events, like, it would have been insane. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, oh, wow, I would have been on Cloud Nine. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, and then, uh, so that's probably that for like moments, I guess. And then. After that, roster change wise, I feel like all the decisions were good. The only one that sticks out is just this last season. 
the only one that sticks out this last season for like roster changes. I feel like besides that, every other <laughs> roster change that was made was like a good move. Yeah. And last season yeah. you were just throwing darts out of board. You're like, all right, you're like Jake having Cole War. You're pick up him, drop cool. him, pick up him, drop him. I think we were all there when you're yeah, towards is, the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's that's just the problem. I mean, every other year besides that, I think the roster changes that I had made or been a part of were really good and you know definitely beneficial. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but going into going into this, you know, for this season, I think the roster changes we made um, were clearly not the right choices for everyone involved. Yeah. And now, like getting going more personal and focus on you as the individual and player. How did you and when did you first start getting into like gaming, Call of Duty, and you really get embraced in in that world? I mean, bro, I've been playing Call of Duty since I was like twelve, maybe, if not younger, um, younger than twelve probably. Um, and that was started the addiction. And then originally I was a Call of Duty hater. And then I played it one day at my cousin's house, literally like a movie, went to his house randomly. I was a Halo addict. And he's like, bro, I got this new game, Call of Duty. I was like, bro, get out of here with that whack game. And then I played it one night. I played it one night. And then me and the Stocksman actually stayed up 24 hours straight after that and just played Call of Duty. I remember the first map I ever played, it was Downpour. I used RPD, (laughs) drop like 50 or something. And I was like, yo, I'm nice at this. And then I just got hooked. And from there... I thought I was like the truth. I thought I was like the best player in the world, you know? <laughs> and then I thought I was the best player in the world. And then um, the next step that happened was like another part, like a movie is that I switched from private school to public school. And then when I switched to public school, the first friend I made in my first day of school in seventh grade, I switched to the middle of middle school too, like such a weird time of your yeah. life. Um, seventh grade, my first class ever in public school, um, sit down next to a kid start chopping it up with them. You go, you play COD. And at this point, I'm like 10th prestige, 55. Like, I think I'm the best player in the world. Like, I'm like, I drop 100 every lobby I'm in, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, but I don't play COD. I already mastered COD. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about, you know? And then I get his gamer tag, go home. He's like, let's play one-on-one. And I just body him like 30 to two or something. And he's like, yo, do you know what game battles is? And I'm like, well, hell, what's game battles, bro? He's like, yeah, you can play against these players. I'm like, there's these tournaments or whatever. And then he signed, he signed me up. And uh, I used that account for my whole career, the one that he made for me. That's crazy. And, yeah, with the same password that he made, everything. It was crazy, <laughs> bro. Like, I just never changed anything about that account. Like, and uh, I used that account my whole career. And that's when I got into it, started playing GBs. And that's when I realized, I'm like, oh, I'm not the best player in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's when I started grinding GBs. And, like, that's what started the addiction from there. Yeah. I feel like that's how pretty much everyone's story is. Everyone has a friend that told them or someone that introduced them to game battles and then the rest is history. You left that friend in the dust. Yeah. Yeah, And then you're like, you're like, ah, I can't be playing with any more IRL friends. I need to find the good GB players. And then you start building up, trying to get your GB rank as low as possible from that point on. Uh, Of course, none of my friends even played anymore. None of my friends even knew I played anymore. Like it was a secret. Like I just disappeared. Like I just stopped playing with them and just, disappeared off the gb shit yeah that's not always going in like middle school high school like gaming wasn't normalized and cool nowadays like nowadays everyone talks about games post games plays games it's just normal but back then it was like you were still kind of like it was it was like nerdy to play video games oh yeah you were a square if you played video games at the time you were everyone absolutely... but everyone played video games but it wasn't like it was just weird it was just a weird everyone was, everyone was like closet gamers like, yeah literally like a... but now everyone every famous person you could think of everyone you know plays video games at some point yeah. and knows it like so it's, it's pretty crazy how open it is now but of course you started playing video games at such a young age how was your family like did they want you to play video games did they not Hell want you no. to Hell no. So they weren't really supportive of it. (laughs) Uh, At the beginning, hell no, they were not supportive of it. They, uh, they were, my family's old school, you know, they wanted me to focus on school education, like that type of stuff. So, um, in the beginning, they're like, you're just wasting your time. What are you doing? Like, go read a book, you know? Yeah. Um, but I was just addicted, (laughs) cracked out kid, just like grinding all the time. (laughs) And, uh, they were not about it at all. And then it came later on, like I was still going to school while I was competing and I was begging my dad to not let, like, to let me take time off school. And he was like, no way. Like, you still have to go to school while you play. And then during World War II, at the beginning of it, after I won my first event, I was like, yo, like, let me get some time off school, you know, this and that. And he was like, no. And then I won the <laughs> next event. <laughs> I won the next event. We went back to back. And then he's like, all right, fine. Like, you could take one semester off school 
uh to just to see where this stuff goes you know and i was like all right perfect that's all i need you gave me that one semester off and then i just never went back <laughs> yeah i've been back since <laughs> yeah. well, so what like grade were you in and like what were you studying in that grade was, if you were in I college was, i was in my third year of university and i was doing chemical engineering yeah no there's no way you could have done that you're not smart enough yeah, to nah, figure that out what i was doing it i was doing it while slamming you i yeah, was doing it while bodying you i'm sure i three owed you I'm for the bodying, tournament i won i three owed you for the tournament i won too you. i wasn't in school at that time but you know i'm bodying you going home doing chemical equations doing some ochem <laughs> work coming back the next day and bodying you again yeah uh, <laughs> so that that was pretty crazy I mean, juggling that was like no joke but that is something that i will say to all players that are coming up nowadays like whether you're challengers or whatever it is like take advantage of the CCL opportunities, like mm -hmm. stay in school while you're gaming because making it to the league is no joke. It's super hard. It's only 48 spots and you have to be really, 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 really extra special to make it to the league. You have to stand out so much and things have to go your yeah. way that it's not worth it to put all your eggs in that one basket. Like you should definitely be going to school while pursuing your hobby and your passion. Um, and once it aligns that you have a real opportunity to fully jump into, then make the switch. But I think if you're trying to come up and you're just fully putting all your eggs in that one basket and committing to it, um, it could end up being like a, you know, damage on your on your potential future that I don't think you should take that risk. Yeah. I'm not saying don't chase your dreams, but like do it with proper risk management, you know? Yeah, of course. Because like, of course, making it to the league is everyone's dream. Then winning a tournament is everyone's dream. But we've seen so many players come into the league and be out of the league in a month like it's very yeah. serious and competitive it's not just you make it to the league now i think it's fine and dandy like no you need to yeah. go harder now granted you get paid at usually the minimum when you get into the league um you're not making life-changing money yeah if you don't perform that minimum goes back to making nothing very quickly if you have a bad month we've seen it yeah. happen time and time again um so yeah it's definitely smart to just not pull your eggs in one basket and then you're 25 26 and have absolutely nothing to build on so it's great to yeah. see like the ccl helping players like 100%. you know compete make some money but then also set themselves up for the future if they don't happen to make it in the league so yeah. it's always good and then of course when it comes to also content creation we've seen players who were either pros like on the verge of going pro switch and play Warzone, or do some other content and like be really successful so you don't want to just put all your eggs in competitive at least you know stream a little bit because you're gonna make money the worst thing you did when you're building a brand and streaming and making content you're gonna make a little bit of money at least so like you at least have a little something coming in, especially if you're in challengers it's also going to give you the most eyes on your gameplay to get exposure if you're playing really well so it's definitely really important to do that but yeah, that's that's very knowledgeable of you to give the game out to those uh, younger yeah. challenger players and people are coming up who might be thinking, unless you're like a generational, like a simp, a hydra, you know it, a sib, like yeah. you gotta, it's very risky. So just be sure you're taking care of yourself along the way and set yourself up for the future. Definitely um, take advantage of CCL, bro. Definitely yeah, take advantage of CCL. That's great. But UCLA, going... when you get a team, hit me up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but when you... Um, when was your first like actual lands and stuff you started going to? Whether it was like local lands or major lands, like what was the first one that really like kickstarted or jumpstarted you to like the pro scene now? I mean, honestly, most of the locals I went to, I went to with you or played against you at the after we uh, met, yeah, yeah, after we met. But before that, the first land I ever went to was in MW3. And you know, honestly, now I'm thinking back on my career, this literally like a movie, bro. So, like. <laughs> that first land in mw3 i literally had to beg my cousin to drive me because it was like an hour away and uh i was grinding mw3 at this point on like a top m and stuff and you know i have like a a little more of a reputation and people know me and i go to this land it's my first time ever playing in person and i thought i was like too cool for school you know so i walk into the land area and i look around and i see everyone and i'm like Yo, this is a weird scene like what's going on here it's like so like weird because it was like a, i don't know it wasn't just a cod <laughs> land. It was like a super like nerd gamer land i don't know what it was but it had cod there you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking around i'm like this is weird like i feel weird being here you know i feel out of place and then my cousin looks at me he's like i don't care i drove you all the way here you're playing like no matter what yeah we're not leaving and bless his heart bless his heart he had the sat the next day and he drove me there and studied at the tournament while i got to play so i go to the <laughs> land shout out Warris. I go, to worse. Land, I go to the land and uh, I play my match. I'm frying. I'm literally frying. I remember it was Lockdown CTS was the first <laughs> map I played. Lockdown CTS was my first map on land ever in MW3. I'm dropping 30 plus. I'm freaking farming. And then uh, 
it was they had this local land in LA and then what ended up happening is the land got like delayed or like something like that happened, right? Where I could yeah. it was supposed to be a one day tournament. It was supposed to be a one day tournament, but something happened where they had to make it a two day tournament. So and I couldn't go the next day because it was a it was a Eid. It was a religious holiday. Dang, God works in crazy ways. It was a religious <laughs> holiday the next day, and um, that's why I couldn't go to the tournament the next day. So every I got my first taste of land. Everyone went to the tournament the next day, finished the land out, and then the people that won, no one got paid. They were supposed to get paid like a couple of G's each player or something from the yeah. two v two, three for all, the four v four, and no one got paid. So if I would have went to the tournament and then ended up actually winning it or placing in the money and not getting paid, my parents would have been like, "See, like this gaming stuff's a joke." What are you wasting <laughs> yeah, it's not for? real. Like, it's yeah, just they would exactly like, who's giving you money to play video games. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, you're like, look, you went to a tournament, you're supposed to make money, you didn't get anything. Like, that's it. It would have been done. The gaming, the gaming stuff would have been kicked out the house tv thrown out the window like it would have been chalked at that point <laughs> um so i didn't end up going which was a blessing honestly i remember i was seething i wanted to go so bad um but it ended up being a blessing because i would have went and placed in the money and not got anything it would have you know exposed gaming for being like a like a yeah that's what the first impression of yeah, going to a tournament yeah. would be like a fraud yeah. you, you don't get exactly. paid out you want you to get nothing even though you're exactly. promised this so they would be like all right waste of time go to school we're not doing this yeah, hundred percent. So oh. it was a super big blessing. But that was then after that, going to locals was always playing with you or against you. Yeah, farming you. You know what I mean? Farming you. I literally almost made you retire <laughs> after I smoked you in finals when you had a world champion on your team. You had you a world champion me. and you had a world Put champion runner up right here. Uh, we could, we right could. Here. I had like forty five on raid hard point. I had like forty and I got costed. Yeah, I mean that is what it is. <laughs> I wasn't on your team yet, but uh, yeah, because then what was your first actual major land you went to? And competed at first major land I went to when I was was when I was 16. It was in Black Ops 2, um, MLG, MLG Dallas. Even that's a movie, bro. Like literally, I'm now that I'm really <laughs> your whole life's a it, movie. I swear to God, it literally feels like a movie. <laughs> like I'm literally reflecting on it, bro. Like that's actually crazy. I don't do that often, but I feel like I should. Um, but like, bro, I was supposed to go to that tournament with a certain team. With a with Hex P like Gucci and Tipsy and those players. Yeah. But at that time, I had built a reputation for being a fraud, a scam artist, not being able to go to the land. <laughs> <laughs> no way you couldn't travel. You yeah, couldn't I tra couldn't travel. I couldn't travel, bro. So at that point, through MW three, and at that time, I had, and Black Ops one, I had, was not able to travel to any tournament. Like I would scrim with the team, fry, be literally frying, like fucking top am frying. And then close to tournament time, I'd be like, oh, I can't go, guys, because my parents wouldn't let me travel for gaming, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that, that became my reputation over those two years. So then going into Black Ops 2 after begging for years and years and years, because the first tournament was coming up, I was begging my dad, like, please let me go, please let me go. He's like, all right, enough, like, enough. Like, well, I'll take you to your first tournament. Like, stop annoying me about this. It's been years. I'm like, all right, thank God. So, I, and I had already f frauded on Gucci and them before in MW3. So... Coming into Black Ops 2 when I was playing with them, I was frying, and then they were like, we, no, there's no way you could go. We don't believe you. Like, we can't risk it. It's the first tournament of the year or whatever. So I get I get Gucci on the phone with my dad, and my dad tells him, like, no, he could come, this and that. Like, it's fine. We're going to be there or whatever. <laughs> but Gucci doesn't believe me because I've been frauding so hard the last two years. <laughs> he doesn't believe me, and he thinks it's one of my cousins. He thinks it's one of my cousins <laughs> on the phone, like, trying to finesse him. Like, oh, no, he could come so I could scrim the next few weeks with them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then he's like, no, we're gonna, we're not gonna, you know, we're gonna go play with someone else. So then I'm like, now I'm losing full because I'm like, damn, the team I want to go with, and that's actually good. Um, I can't go with because they think I'm lying, but yeah. like, I can actually go to the tournament. So like at this point, <laughs> people didn't really believe I could go to the tournament, but I got a team that needed a player, and I went with them, and I actually showed up, and everyone was mind blown. They're like, oh damn, this kid could actually travel. Like, what's going on? <laughs> and then uh, that tournament happened, and that was kind of the beginning of it all. You know, everyone thought I was gonna go to the tournament and just uh scratch the itch and be done with it but then it made the itch a 500 times worse yeah now you knew you were like you were you got your first real taste of what it was really like at a major tournament yeah you're yeah. seeing all the teams the crowd people winning and you're just in black ops too so it's literally the glory days literally yeah, exactly. the best days that anyone would pay any amount of money to go yeah. spectate a tournament and go play in a tournament one more time because that was literally like it just doesn't get any better than that because we weren't really playing for a lot of money it was just strictly passion like yeah, 100%. you were losing money every time you go to an event to pay for your flight yeah. pay for your hotel pay for food over the weekend and unless you were getting top two you weren't really making any money back so yeah 100%. and even then you'd win like 
five thousand dollars each before taxes so yeah it really you weren't making anything um and it was these just straight players are complaining bro these challenges challenges players complaining nowadays with all these prize pools and all these opportunities bro we were paying for our own travel to tournaments that you knew you weren't going to make money on and playing on split screen split screen open bracket is crazy imagine scrimming all all month for your to <laughs> make a name for yourself and then going to the tournament and playing on split screen <laughs> Yeah, it was the fools are playing the for trenches. fifty grand prize pool, hundred grand prize pool, and they're complaining. If you don't sit your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was definitely the trenches right there. So did any crazy things happen that event or Yes, bro, yes. Yes, a lot of crazy things happened that event. <laughs> a lot of crazy <laughs> things happened. You, you yeah. Two crazy things happened that event. All right, one funny story that I'll make it quick. We're playing on split screen open bracket. I'm playing with uh me, Mochilla, and uh Jugster. Diabolic, yeah, diabolic juxter and um and Moch clutches a 1v2 versus like sensor Pluto and like someone else, <laughs> but we're on split screen. He clutches the 1v2 and he goes to defuse the bomb and I'm getting hype. I'm getting hype and I hit the X button so it opens up the home screen and he drops the bomb. <laughs> so he doesn't defuse it and we lose the round. Oh my god. Game gosh. five or game three or whatever it was. And I'm like <laughs> nah, it glitched. It glitched. Yo, I swear this glitched. Like, what you talking about? It glitched. Nah. <laughs> you oh know what God. I mean? Yeah, MLG and I rolls around Black Ops Two. That's where we meet, and it was just kind of yeah, crazy because yeah. we just lived near each other, and we we're in high school together. You were one grade yeah. above me, but then like we were close enough to where like our high schools, you know, would play each other in sports. Yeah, and we stuff. knew we could know the same people and interact. Yeah, like, like, for so, sure. So we ended up. I was going to a party. I run into. I see Dylan. I'm like, Yo, Dylan, and the people. Are, yo, how do you guys know each other? Oh, um, yeah, you just know each other from different, yeah, you know, different other. towns. Yeah, different yeah, towns. You just no hang out. No one knew sports. we were both gamers. No one knew we were both gamers. <laughs> yeah. But we knew, obviously. So whenever we see each other at like a random party or something like that, we'd be like, yo, what's good? They'd be like, yo, you guys are cool. How do you guys know each other? Yeah, just like, from yeah, just know each stuff. other. There's no stuff. Yeah. Thing just happens, you know? <laughs> like Little know League or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we just know each other. But then, yeah. yeah, like meeting you, you were like a top am at the time. And I was like, yeah. no one. So that's when, after that, I probably started taking over the West Coast lands more. Because I was going to West Coast lands, so like the West Coast community knew me. Yeah, and I was yeah. like really good in that. But that's when like, meet, after meeting you, I met like the sender, who's now the coach of LAT. Yeah. Uh, I met the Diabolics and stuff. And then you, ended you up, got into the top AM circle. I got into like the top AM circle and had opportunities to like make my name. Because I won a tournament at the end of the year. And then that's when yeah. replays Crowder now followed me and tweeted at me and stuff yeah, yeah and so it's just crazy how like the connections work in call of duty well connections only work if you're good enough for them to work essentially mm -hmm. like yeah everyone the your connection will give you the opportunity yeah yeah everyone most people are going to have an opportunity for their moment you really got to seize your moment and like you got to overdo it to like make sure that no one can deny you of your moment um yeah. so you got to make sure you're insanely good but yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, nice and, small world. Imagine we never met. Imagine, who knows imagine the teammate that I went to that tournament because like the teammate that I had at that event was friends with his teammate. Yeah, and that's how we ended up interacting. Like if we never met at that time, who knows how different the paths would have went? Like who knows what would have happened to you if you had to go through the pits longer? Who knows what would have happened? Like I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, I found a team a day before the tournament. No bullshit. Yeah, my friend exactly. Kalani Last hit me second. up and I'm just like, yo, you want to come play Anaheim? I was like, yeah. And then it was like me, Kalani, Nihil, fanatic, and just went. Be like Pluto's team at the time because Pluto was still a big name back then, and then yeah. played place like top twenty nine through thirty second, which is solid for like a first you know pickup team who wasn't even there a day before. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was pretty crazy, but that was the start of it all really. And um, yeah, so moving on, Ghost happens. Um, and when was like the biggest moment for you where you like really broke out? Because it didn't feel like you had a broke breakout moment for like a couple years until of course the yeah, World 100%. War Two. But like, what was happening? From like BO2 to what would it be like? To the end of IW. End of IW kind of. essentially. So like you really didn't have like that, that him moment. moment as a like yeah. a professional, a top professional. Yeah. So for me, um, what kind of happened was that Black Ops 2, I only got to go to two tournaments because then I had to quit after those two events. So I didn't play the rest of the year, um, which I really, really wish I got to play because I felt like I was really good at that game. And then Ghost, I went to the first two tournaments of the year and then didn't play the rest of the year again um so then going into aw that's when i started actually competing like for all the tournaments in the season 
and that's what like, made the pro league and all this other stuff. Um, I was bodying you, but then it got cost bodying me. <laughs> yeah, not an S and D's. I was dropping dub digits. <laughs> and body then, some uh, bio lab. That's it. <laughs> and then um, I competed in Black Ops Three. That was a weird year. And then IW was kind of really was like a make it make or break it year for me at that point. It was like um, I'd been playing so far so long at this point. I got screwed over in AW. Black Ops Three was super choppy. And then coming into IW is when things got like I wanted to make the pro league again and do all this stuff. And that's when it was open qualification. And we ended up not making the pro league uh, at that time. So I just kind of was like done with those. Like, I'm not playing the rest of the season. Like what's the point of playing? I'm not in the league. Um, so I took like three weeks off. I literally didn't even touch a controller. And then randomly uh, Diabolic, Sender, and I think it was Ivy hit me up to like scrim with them because Anaheim was coming up and they know I'm an LA local. So they're like, yo, like play with us. Like we know you're bored. Like you haven't been playing for the last like three weeks, month or whatever. I was like, all right, well, I really am bored, whatever. I'll hop on and play. <laughs> and I got on literally after not touching a controller for that long, started scrimming instantly like that day. And we scrimmed versus TK and I was dropping 40 every single map. And I was like, yo, this feels hella good. <laughs> <laughs> so then I DM'd, I DM'd the TK boys after that because I knew they were like good and established org at the time. And I DM'd the TK boys after that scrim. And I was like, yo, I haven't played in a month and I just got on. I dropped 40 on you guys every map pick me up you know <laughs> and then they were like all right bet we will so they dropped i forgot who they dropped they dropped someone and picked me up and then i played on tk like to close out the last like quarter i guess of iw or something like that um and that's kind of i felt like when i came into my own as a player and like actually started playing really well we didn't have much results to show for it we were just getting like top 12 or something um but individually i felt like as when i started hitting that stride at that time and yeah going into that off season into world war ii is when we picked up kenny and picked up chino and then from there that's when it really just everything changed like that's when the career trajectory went from like this to like that yeah you know what i mean like right away yeah that was pretty crazy how did building that roster go and when did you know like you had something special with that roster because of course you guys no one expected it because no one expected that yeah. like, kenny was pro in aw for a little bit he went to like a event or two but he was like young yeah. and he stopped playing for a little bit chino was also like kind of got screwed over by the age restrictions too everyone knew he was good but not like as good and then you're playing with theory who like, had past success but he wasn't always he wasn't like that guy at the time but how did that team form or like when did you guys know that you had something special I mean, we knew we knew we had something special when I think we played either like some of the first SD tournaments. I think we played, we like were really good at them, and we won a couple. And then to the first, we knew we had something special when we played the first two K. I think it was, yeah, I think it was the first two K. Because at that time, at the beginning of the season, you needed pro points to you yeah. needed to do well in these two Ks. Like these two Ks were everything. Like you had to do well in the two Ks to get the pro points to get to the championship bracket at the event to then like place well you have a higher chance to place well yeah you don't have to go through open bracket and you know that's how you're gonna make the league is through the pro points so these two k's were like life or death um especially if you're like a fringe team you know yeah and um at the first 2k i think we made it to the finals of the first 2k and we played optic and like we lost a really close series in the finals versus optic when no one expected us to even be like that relevant yeah and that's when we realized like yo we got to the finals and we barely lost we could actually do this and then we i think we won the next 2k and then got to the finals of the third one before the event so we got to like finals one and then like finals and then clay should pull out the duck soup yeah clay should pull out the duck soup and beat us <laughs> in the finals for cheating one of those pro points hella bad um and then once we did that like online we're like yo as long as we don't go to the land and break like we're gonna be good yeah and then we went to the tournament and we won and it was just like whoa <laughs> like what's going on you know what i mean at that point like it was just like insane like yeah they went from insane. like nobodies pretty much yeah. to like the champions on yeah. no one's radar to holy shit these guys are holding the trophy now yeah like literally everyone knew us as like the fringers like yeah they're the like fringe. oh yeah those guys are like pro but like they're not yeah, yeah. Like, we're like on the fringe the whole time and then we went from being on the fringe to literally winning without dropping a series yeah and then we won the next event and we still didn't drop a series. Like we won two events in a row without dropping a match. That's crazy. Yeah, just running through winners. Has anyone even done that yet since then? No joke. Has that even been a thing? We won two events in a row without dropping a match. No, nah, probably not two events in a row. <laughs> probably not two events in a row without dropping a match. Like that's pretty crazy. Yeah, no, that's definitely really crazy. And then I mean, of course, when you do that, like that changes your whole careers because now you're like, yeah. you're that team, you're those players. Like everyone wants to play with you. 
in yeah. World War Two. At one point, we were gonna team together. Where it was a bit of been. We would have been. God yeah, that would have been insane. That would have been insane. That would have been an insane. Me, you, Tommy, Tommy Azuma, and Kenny. and Kenny. Like that. Yeah, I mean, we would like, actually won everything in World War Two. We would have been insane after this. Was was after insane. stage one playoffs. Yes, after stage one playoffs, we were supposed to join Phase. After the, the first day done. of the tournament. Yeah, we played them the, we played them the first day of the tournament. And we bodied them, right? We bodied them the first yep. day of the tournament. And then the deal was basically done like after that night. Like Yeah, we're on a phone calls done. with like phase owners and stuff. Yeah. Everything like, like it's set. Everything was done. Me and Kenny were joining phase after this tournament. And then for some reason, they wake up on Saturday, whatever day it was, and decide they randomly know how to play the game and they just win the tournament. Yeah, it was and I'm insane. like, now nah, that was a movie. Yo, what? I'm like, they won the tournament. I'm telling them, like, yo, you got to still make the change. You guys are ass. You have to make the change. This was some insane movie shit. <laughs> it was and some insane. They were, like, they were like, nah, nah, we can't. We just won. I, like, I mean, I get it. Whatever. All right, it is what it is. So then they'd end up not being able to get me and Kenny because they won the tournament. Yeah. And then we played them at the next event and sent them home. And I was like, I told you. <laughs> I was like, I told you. I, like, I told you. You should have picked us up. Yeah, now we would have been, we been so been gross. Insane. We would have won every tournament, literally, not even close. But yeah, that tournament yeah. was actually a movie. If you want to go watch the best losers bracket run of all time, go watch that tournament. It gets overshadowed you by the finals. Try a losers bracket or what? It gets overshadowed by the finals, but we went game five every series in losers, except for when we 3 0'd you guys to get like top three. And then we mm -hmm. reverse swept LG in winner's final or loser's finals and then beat Optic in two best of fives. And obviously the replays 1v3, me run through the artillery. That was genuinely the best loser back run of all time. Go watch 100%. it back if you need the proof. Um, that was insane. Yeah, that was insane. We would actually have been so good in World War II. But of course you guys had a great season. You ended up getting second at champs, won like two tournaments or two tournaments that year or something, second three at champs, tournaments. three tournaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he goes into Black Ops 4. How did that go? Because obviously you ended up on Splice, um, yeah. and I'm pretty sure you were a hot commodity after that. If you have a year like that, everyone's going to want to get you on the team. So what my happened? Bank account, my bank account was real happy that offseason. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. It really was. Um, I mean, that offseason was pretty mixy, too. Um, yeah, that was – I mean, I still haven't told the story of that offseason. I don't think I ever really will. Why? Why not, bro? Tell it here. <laughs> People want to know it. It happened <laughs> eight years ago, or like six, seven years ago. Who cares? Yeah, nah. I'm just, I'll keep that one in the pocket. But that was right. insane. Just know I got done dirty, really insanely bad. Like by really who? Insanely bad. Don't worry about it. No, nah, okay. I got done. I got done dirty so mega bad. But there's no reason <laughs> to talk about it and kick up old dirt, you know. Yeah. Um, but then ended up forming Splice with the, I guess the rejects at the time because it was me, from the TK team because Kenny went to 100T. Um, Danny, cause or Looney, cause Austin had gone. Austin and TJ went to 100 T2, or Austin, T, Austin went to 100 T. Optic, TJ went to Optic. Optic, went to Optic. Oh, yeah, TJ, TJ went, went to Optic. Optic. F3 from my team, rest in peace, went to 100 T. So me and Danny ended up making a team with the players we thought we had a good chance with, um, and we ended up being really good. I mean, to be honest, after the first event when 100 T was ass and we were really good, and they were thinking about dropping Kenny, I was sitting there like, please, please. <laughs> drop Please. Kenny. <laughs> I was like, drop him, drop him, drop him, drop him. I was like, yeah, literally, I was like, please drop him, bro. Yeah, you're like, um, yeah, Kenny's terrible. Let me team with him. <laughs> yeah, literally, literally, I was. And he was texting me like, yo, like, I think they're going to drop me. And I was like, come to Papa, no problem. <laughs> I hope they drop you. Like, I'll pick you up tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, they ended up not dropping him, which was obviously, you know, the right decision for them. Now he's an LAT 100T legend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then, uh, that season was crazy too, because then I ended up getting benched uh, from Splice or dropped from Splice a few months into it, and um, then I picked you up. Show. Yeah, that's <laughs> the shit show. It was funny because I came to Anaheim to spectate. Right, first day of the event, I walk into the pro lounge. The EG coach and managers and all of them are sitting there, like everyone's chilling in the pro lounge, and I see them, and I'm not playing at this event because I got dropped like right before it, and I walk in and I knew I wanted to play with them. So I walk in, I see the coach and manager sitting there. I'm like, yo, pick me up after this event. They were like, bet. <laughs> like, <laughs> we got you after this event because they were like last place at the time. Yeah. They're like, bet, we'll pick you up. I was like, all right, perfect. So then they end up going to the tournament, not doing well. And then that's when I got a chance to get on EG. You, you picked me back up when I was down in the dumps. Yeah, that was that crazy. That team experience was fire. Honestly, I loved that team. Yeah, and our team we was so hard. Yeah, no. me, you, J-Cap, Apathy, Exotic. Oh. 
Yeah, that was I'm a good team. We don't even yeah. gotta talk about champs. Like, if we get six points, it oh changes the whole God. course of history. The tiny. I won the one v one for the ring. The tiny tears aren't the tiny tears anymore because they would have played the tiny United plays LAT for e United plays hundred T for for top, eight. for top eight at COD champs and Black Ops four. We don't gotta talk about it. We just needed six points and we couldn't get it. Whatever. So Black Ops four. I won the one v one for the yeah, ring. Yeah, you, bro, did, on the you did. Bro, on that control, I'm pretty sure that me. Apathy and Abizi set the damage record like for that tournament on that yeah, C side. Like it was that mixy of a control. It was like each of us had like seven thousand damage. Exactly. It was like the, it just oh. insanely mixy. You won the one v one at the end versus Abizi to like, and then we choked math four where we couldn't get six points and they need like eighty and you know we broke down. So we move on and learn from those mistakes. <laughs> but uh, quick, quick brush that one under the rug onto the next. And then of course franchising starts. Everyone's hearing rumors like, "Yo, it's just about to pop off. We're about to be a real sports league. Four hundred one k's, insurance, healthcare. Yeah. Everything's about to be solidified." And franchising delivered. Everyone's getting paid insane amounts. Probably the most we'll ever see salaries be for a couple years in Call of Duty. Um, yeah. So yeah, we ended up teaming on New York subliners. We made that happen. Me, you, Zuma, Temp, zero to start. We were struggling. We get Mac and uh, kind of like pick it up from there of how that team was because we definitely have some funny <laughs> stories of like on being on New York subliners because like that they were was insane. They only bro. dealt with like Overwatch and like Asian players before. And of course, if you look at Asian video game League of Legends Overwatch players, they are very, very reserved, respectful. Very, very respectful, respectful and quiet. And then you t look at a team with accuracy temp zuma as the, and then even me back then like <laughs> it was pretty you know pretty crazy like we're a little rowdy we're definitely a little rowdy maybe more than a little maybe a lot yeah but we uh it was a, honestly a fun team it was a fun team we were really good we just couldn't win a damn search couldn't win we a search win a dish. we were godlike at respawn <laughs> we just couldn't win a search we take we go game five versus phase every series every we, time gun runner, gun runner, SD, gun runner SD, we lost five, five times that season yeah went game five every time lost five game five runner game runner game five gun runner s and d's yeah but we ended up getting one we got a little piece of the pie and it happened to be the new york home series which made it even yeah. sweeter um so that was pretty fire moment and like that just that whole experience with the team was fun. You know, we were all good friends at the time and we had a good experience together and we got to live in New York. COVID ended up ruining the yeah, New York experience that was the fun. few months. But like, that was pretty crazy. That was yeah. pretty, Everyone pretty gets crazy year. Dreams of living in New York. Because when you're a kid growing up, you see all the shows, you see all the movies of New yeah, York City. Yeah, I romanticized City. this so hard in my head. Yeah, like New York City is just a crazy thing. All the lights, all the go, 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 the hustle and stuff. But... There's a, there's a lot of good stories from like the staff of the team being scared of the COD team because they were because uh, we would just yell. I mean, you and Donnie especially would yell at each other. What? You and no, Donnie especially. So yell. they what were talking about because we had our own little box room and then the works were outside. Well, no AC. How, of course oh, we're yeah. gonna be on edge. Yeah, no, nah, no AC for the first like month and a half, and we're yeah. it's ninety degrees in there. There's eight people in there. 16 monitors eight pcs in a small room as well so everyone's sweating like we're just in war literally on edge literally in war yeah that was an insane team donnie <laughs> was roasting trey saying he like moves like a minecraft character yeah. so like, you know just <laughs> yeah no nah, it was it was just went downhill until we got mac the the young talented mac was mac, our savior. mac, mac was, was our savior he like was the piece we needed to like yeah. really become a team and figure that out but it was definitely good to get one um after that we team on rocket for a little bit you can actually you drop me i did drop you i mean you you know you deserved it a little bit yeah, you know no, you, like it wasn't it. like a you know because when we were talking about dropping i was like yeah well, i think like it was just ramadan obviously it's tough to play when you're in ramadan we could talk about you can talk about your experiences with that after yeah but i was just like yeah like he's gonna be fine he's gonna be better give him another chance they're like no and then we just got major <laughs> maniac back and of course we end up finding success after but, uh, Which is insane because you guys were dog shit. You guys were literally worse after, and then randomly, it just clicked a yeah. week before the tournament. Yeah, no, it clicked. I think I like switched roles for a little bit. Then it was, yeah, that wasn't working. Shambles that you guys switched roles. Uh, then we switched back, and then, and then you switched back, and it randomly clicked. Yeah, we beat like burning. we beat like Vegas in a map or Paris at the time on a really close like series to win three one. And then I remember getting food with you after, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, our team's kind of like ass, yeah, like it's not that good. And then. Like a week later, 
we just started frying in scrims. Yeah, and I knew we were nowhere. good. We beat FaZe in like three to four maps in a scrim. And in Cold War, you didn't do that. Like you, No one beat FaZe in scrims in Cold War. So yeah. we won three or four maps. I was like, yo, we're insane. Right before Major 5. <laughs> and we ended up winning the tournament. So it was just crazy. But speaking on like Ramadan, because you're one of the few, very few players who has competed at such a high level while doing Ramadan. Like what are the yeah. challenges and... How how was it throughout the years? Because you've done it I for mean, years. You know, to be honest, like I don't know what happened that rocker year. Like my hand and brain and body must have just dissolved and fell apart. Because every other year that I've done Ramadan, I've been good. Like I've honestly probably been even better during it. Yeah, there was the that meme of like Ramadan year. accuracy. Like, yeah, playing yeah, better, Ramadan. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it was. I don't know what happened that year in specific, but like. It was just catastrophic that year. <laughs> I was getting annihilated. Like, so I thought, honestly, I told you when you guys were going to drop me. I literally told you, I was like, bro, like, don't even defend me. Like, I get it. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, it was like so obvious me, that, like, yeah. you, you know, it was just. It was really bad. I was like, don't, like, don't even put your neck out on the line for me. Like, I totally understand the situation. It is what it is. Like, I get it. I don't know what happened that month. That, that month. My hand, my thumbs just fell off. And I used all my juice for Cold War to get that clutch versus Optic. <laughs> Literally, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used all my Cold War juice and Cold War luck and Cold War juju for that clutch Hey, that's one Optic. of the biggest moments in COD history, so. And then it just disappeared after that. So, um, you know, playing during Ramadan, though, you know, it's a blessing. It's a month, you know, a holy month. And there's people out there that play other sports and professional, you know, situations that they need to perform at a top level. And, you know, not even just professional situations, people out there that are struggling and, you know, in way worse situations, like our brothers in Palestine, brothers and sisters in Palestine right now. And they, uh, they still, you know, have to observe Ramadan and they still execute on that, on that thing that we need to do for God's sake. So to me, just playing a video game, it was, uh, it should be easy compared to other people's circumstances. Yeah. Um, but just for some reason that month, it was just tough and I just didn't deliver. So I had no excuses at that time. I didn't even really want to blame Ramadan. I was just kind of like, yeah, I didn't play. You know what I mean? It's not, I didn't play good. It's <laughs> yeah. not an excuse. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, of course, we kind of talked about your rebuild with Seattle Surge right after and like the success you found, the risk you took, yeah. and they, they paid off. Um, you guys kept the team for another year in MW2. I kind of guess it's kind of where we left off because you got third at champs after yeah. winning an event in Vanguard and then MW2. You guys came out the gates hot again, getting second at the first event. And how was go that? Go watch the VOD. Whoever's watching this thing, go watch <laughs> the VOD. Map one, grand finals of MW2. Another major where I should have won. Map one, I'm 30 and 15 with two minutes. Minutes and we doing lose it all the game and we lose the game in the grand finals we get on the big stage i'm delivering we end up losing lose the finals get second place and that's when all the drama starts transpiring with like you know ag maybe optic pred optic, <laughs> yeah optic pred all this other stuff you know and then also to be honest during that time like i'm not here to air out anyone else's business but we just as a team we all know what was going on um people had you know personal stuff going on i had personal stuff going on Everyone had, there were so many issues that were going on at that time in everyone's lives on top of all this other extra unnecessary drama um, that really uh, was breaking in the armor of the team. And if we weren't so tight knit, even though that year wasn't really that successful for us at all by any means, because we only got to the finals once and then I think we got fourth at champs at the end, mm. everything in between was not good. Um, but there was so much outside pressures on that team that if it was anyone else but us four that had that tight of a bond that we had, it would have been completely catastrophically chalked, nuked the team. Um, <laughs> it would have been insane. But because we were so tight knit and close, we were able to, you know, kind of at least fight back versus all of that without having to break up the team and still ending up on like a somewhat respectable note. Um, but everyone just had so much stuff going on at that time. And I'm glad that. I wouldn't have wanted to go through that process at that time with anyone else, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely a crazy year, but it was good to, like, at least get, you know, make a little run at champs because you guys beat LAT. They won an event yeah. that year. You beat Optic. Yeah. Um, they yeah. were a top two team at a couple events that year. Yeah. So it's like you beat some good teams just to get, like, a respectable placing to at least end the year that, you like you said, it was lackluster yeah. for, the, for the most part. Um. 100%. But yeah, MW2, then it goes into MW3. We already really covered all that stuff. So we can just get into some more like personal things about you. What's like your favorite? You get one meal, last meal. What are you getting? One last meal. Damn, that's a good one, huh? I am getting 
a New York strip with black truffle risotto. Mm hmm. Mm. Roasted Brussels sprouts with some balsamic. Mm hmm. And then a couple pieces of salmon nigiri. Okay. It's a good that's, last meal. That's, that's my Fancy, last meal. bougie, luxur luxurious <laughs> meal. And, yeah. um,. That's my last meal for sure. If there was one event you could replay and just like feel everything again, what event would that be? Wow. Like you're reliving an event pretty much. Reliving an event, I would pick CWL New Orleans. Really? That's the event I'd pick, yeah. The second event you guys went with TK. Event. Yeah, because the first event was special. Don't get me wrong. The first event was very, very special because my first win, I also got MVP at that event. But everyone was talking so much trash on our name that like, oh, first event, cheese, this cheese, that cheese. They figured out the game cheese, whatever. All these other excuses that no one thought we were going to win again. You know what I mean? That that was just a one-hit wonder. So going to the next event, I wanted to win that one more than I even wanted to win the first one. So once <laughs> we won the second one, it was kind of like a, I, like, we really here. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it like, wasn't that a was like the Yeah, like that was like the establishing moment to like, put our stamp on the scene and put our stamp on the year like we've arrived and we're not messing around you know so for me winning the second one in the fashion that we did like not losing again to win back to back was like that was the most like uh i guess mm, validating feeling that was the most validating moment to me it was like all right like it wasn't a fluke yeah. Imagine, you know, when everyone's talking smack like that, no matter how strong minded you are, a little bit's gonna drip into your head or a little bit's gonna drip into your heart a little bit. You know what I mean? Always. It's hard to, it's hard it's hard to block all of it out. So going through that time period before you win, you might have that thought like, damn, if we don't win, maybe we are one hit wonders. But then doing it like we did and winning, that was so validating that um it felt unreal. And if you could build a team of players you never played with before, who would you pick? All time players that whether they're retired or currently playing now, but you couldn't you cannot have team with them before. Damn. A lot of options. Yeah. Simp scump. Ooh, a simp scump subduo? Yeah, simp scump. I mean, there's a lot. Simp scump probably That's it, that's your subduo. Who's your AR now? I mean, listen up, you gotta build a roster. You're running main. You're sitting in hills. In this getting, type of game, in this type I of mean, game, whatever type of game, it don't matter. Just yeah, whatever roster you think would be the best I for all cards. I like Sim Scrap, Sim Scrap, Scump, or like formal Sim Scump, something like that. Formal Sim Scump, Scrap, yeah, formal scump. yeah. You know, maybe Scrap, maybe formal, depending on how you're feeling. It depends on what. Depending on what, if we're getting like jetpack era formal if we're getting like boots on the ground then i'll take scrap <laughs> yeah solid one mara that's been a pleasure that's it for me thank you for coming on the show and uh talking about the history of, of call of duty everything your history and uh you know let's have a good year this year let's bring, yes, bring some sir. chips home for the cloud nine cracking the whip on you you every time you miss a row <laughs> or a clutch nah nah never i'm never missing one rotation or a clutch so you don't have to worry about that <laughs> i know you're good for it yeah, yeah, yeah. all right but uh if you guys made it to the end thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed this uh you can check out all accuracies information twitter twitch all that down below in the description if you have met them like i said you are real ones another episode down love you guys all thank you for tuning in lamar appreciate you joining us yes sir later boys peace out everyone